Siegel, Gertrude Heathcliff. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to listen to this. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Skelton's Funny Faces 3. And now, one of America's clowns, Red Skelton. Proof, good night. <laughs> I must explain about my voice. I've uh, <clears throat> I, I caught a little cold for some reason. I <clears throat> rode home in an open patrol wagon or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be fine. I, I will admit that I'm under a heavy sedation. <clears throat> Money. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> I have to do that every hour or so. And it, uh, it's a little annoying, but it. <laughs> I forgot to shake the bottle, you know. <laughs> oh boy, but I was going to tell you that I, I want to thank you for, for the nice applause when I first walked out. I played a nightclub not long ago, and I, and, and I walked out on the stage. <laughs> there was one guy in the audience applauded me. So I walked out to thank him, and it turned out to be a waiter trying to get some ketchup out of a bottle. <laughs> but uh, I always come in town a little early, and I walk around into the malls and stuff, and people say the darndest things to me. One little lady walked up to the day, and she said, Red Skelton, oh, I thought you were dead. <laughs> Are you ready? I said, I'm still alive. She says, when are you gonna retire? <laughs> and another lady walked up to me and she says, are you real or a rerun? <laughs> but I feel good. I feel good outside of my coal. I'm 70 years old now, but I got young blood. <laughs> Of course, it's in an old container, you know. <laughs> but you know, age doesn't bother me at all. You know how I start the day off? I open up my eyes, and if I don't see candles and smell flowers, I get up. <laughs> But you know, age can play tricks on you, but it's fun when you get a certain age. You can do anything you feel like doing, you know? <laughs> Only you don't feel like doing it, you know? <laughs> you know, when you're about 20 years old and a girl looks at you, you think it's because you're kind of cute, you know? Then when you're about 30 and a girl looks at you, you think it's because of your physique. When you get about 50 and a girl looks at you, you think it's because of your intellect and your wisdom. <laughs> I've reached the age now. A girl looks at me, I look down to see if I got my pants on. <laughs> but, but I have, I, have I, I, I still chase girls if it's downhill. <laughs> 
No, I'm married. I'm married. I have a beautiful wife. My wife is unusual. She's got blue eyes, like sapphires. Looks like deep pools of water, you know? And if you look real close, you can see jaws swimming around. <laughs> no, my wife's nice. She's really nice. You know that we've had only one argument in our, own, in our entire marriage. When we, were first, when we first got married, I got a little angry, see? And I took a swing at her. <laughs> and I didn't see her for about three weeks. And then finally my eyes started to open. <laughs> you know, I have fun wherever I go, but I get in trouble once in a while, see? A lot, a lot, a lot of things happen to me. I'm standing on a corner the other day, and there's a, the chimes are ringing in front of this cathedral. And I said to this little guy, I said, aren't the chimes beautiful? He said, what's that? I said, aren't the chimes beautiful? He said, what did you say? I said, aren't the chimes beautiful? He says, I can't hear you. Them damn bells are ringing. <laughs> there was a guy walking up the street. He had a Great Dane, one of the biggest flea breeders you ever saw in your life. Dude. He goes into a little bar for a drink and he ties this dog to a lamppost. He goes in, while he's in there, a guy comes in and he says, who owns the big dog tied to the lamppost outside? The guy says, he's mine. He says, well, he's dead. He says, dead? What happened? He says, my dog killed him. He says, what kind of a dog you got? He says, a chihuahua. <laughs> he says, how can a chihuahua kill a Great Dane? He says, I don't know. He probably got lodged in his throat. <laughs> Another one for you. A guy jumps out of an airplane, see, pulls the ripcord on his parachute, but it doesn't open. So as he's floating down through the air, he meets a body coming up to him, and he says, do you know anything about parachutes? The guy says, no. Do you know anything about Coleman stoves? <laughs> they talk about nutty things that happen. <laughs> Which joke you working on, honey? <laughs> Talk about nutty things that happened. I was in New York when the Pope was here, see? So we all went out to the Yankee Stadium to see this great man. <laughs> and some drunk up in the grandstands, he yells, play ball! <laughs> says, you idiot, that's the Pope down there. He says, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> I got one for you. But would you would you bring it? Would you give me my hat? Would you bring me my hat, please? Can you give me a hat, please? <laughs> well, like I say, good help's hard to get, you know. <laughs> got a joke for you. Got a joke for you. Two seagulls, Gertrude and Heathcliff. <laughs> She says, you know this laying eggs is a pain in the neck. He says, you're always complaining, always complaining. Come on, come, come with me. So they fly downtown to the city hall. He says, what do you bring me down here for? He says, stick around. The mayor is going to lay a cornerstone. <laughs> got another one. I got another one. They're flying, see? And a big jet goes by. <laughs> she says, good heavens, did you see how fast that bird was going? He says, I thought, so oh, what? Your tail was on fire, you'd go that fast too. <laughs> They're flying over Washington, D.C. And she says, look, down there is the Capitol building. He says, yeah. This one's on the house. <laughs> I got a great gag for you. I got a great thing for you to do. You know, people walk up there always saying, you're putting on a little weight, aren't you? I got it. <laughs> My wife said to me the other day, you're putting on a little weight, aren't you? I says, yeah, I only weighed eight pounds when I was born.
my wife said to me, if you don't lose weight, I'm going to make you wear a girdle. See, well, I didn't pay any attention to her. A few weeks later, I walk in, and here's this thing hanging on the back of the bathroom door. Now, I know what you dear ladies go through. <laughs> I take this girdle down off of there, and I say, <laughs> I says, okay, I'll lose weight. <laughs> she says, you take off my hot water bottle. <laughs> hey. In uh, speaking of age, that's it, folks. Don't get up, make them jump. <laughs> Somebody crossing over into the aisles. The, um, I found out uh, as, as you get a little bit older, you start reliving your childhood through the eyes of your children's children. So with that, I'd like to show you in mime a little old man teaching his grandson to play baseball. Are you getting tired? Okay, <laughs> okay. No, I, I don't ever get tired. I always look this way when I'm behind in my car payments. <laughs> <laughs> the next little pass, my, I will need a chair. I will need a chair. I, I need a chair. <laughs> How can you sleep back there with all these lights on? <laughs>
thank you. <laughs> Usually they yell, put it on. <laughs> My uh, next little pet of mine, <laughs> next little pet of mine is a, um, my next, oh, <laughs> pardon me, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that wasn't part of it, see, <laughs> it almost was. <laughs> No, I have to apologize. You see, I never eat before a performance. And everybody's been so nice since I've been here. <laughs> before the show, I had a tuna fish sandwich. I don't like to complain, but I think they finally accepted Charlie. <laughs> At this time, I would like to do a, um, a lady driving a car. <laughs> any nurses in the audience? Huh? Any nurses in the audience? Yeah, 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 bless your little hearts. They mean well, but they'll drive you nuts. <laughs> They've all got the same routine. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Time for your sleeping pill. <laughs> <laughs> and they always walk in and say, well, how are we today? <laughs> they all say, oh, everything's we, right? Yeah. yeah. How are we today? Did we have a good night's sleep? Did we have our breakfast? Shall we have our bath? Oh, we almost fainted on that one, boy. <laughs> the way they give you a bath in a hospital, isn't that horrible, huh? This nurse gave me a bath in bed, the idiot, and I fell out of the pan. <laughs> I had this one big nurse. <laughs> I tell you, if she had on red earrings, she'd look like a bus. No, <laughs> <laughs> she 
Anyhow, you know, she comes in wearing, wearing this mink coat thing. Now, she leaves the room for a minute, and I was real cold. I was real cold. So I got up, and I put on the, the nurse's fur coat and one of those little surgical gowns, you know, the tie in the back. <laughs> they ain't made for tall people, boy, I tell you. <laughs> Do you ever see people standing around the corridors of hospitals? <laughs> I used to feel sorry for him till I got in there, you know? <laughs> you gotta wave like that. You wave like this, you're dead, boy. <laughs> Anyhow, I put on this, this nurse's fur coat and this little surgical gown. Now I get back in the bed and I go to sleep. When I wake up the next morning, they're preparing me for surgery and some idiot shaving the coat. <laughs> Next little pantomime is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Everything up to now has been so legitimate. <laughs> this is a veterinarian giving a whale a flu shot. <laughs> Pardon me now while I comb my hair. I'm gonna do it while I can. <laughs> it ain't gonna be long, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know, I don't let age bother me. I don't let age bother me. I talk about age all the time, but I don't worry about it. We had longevity in my family. My grandmother, when she died, she was 102, 102, and ne never used glasses, drank right out of the jug. <laughs> You know, there's some habit you just never get out of, you know? <laughs> you go, oh, boy. Not only did I tease it, I made it mad. <laughs> you 
You know, hair is nice. Hair is nice. But it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's an annoyance. I can't figure it out myself. There's a kid lives next door to me. He's got hair down to his shoulders. He's got a beard down to his navel. And he shaves under his arms. Now you figure that out. <laughs> You know, when I was younger, I had nice hair. I got a pink skull now. <laughs> but when I was younger, and, and, and I was a devil with a girl's boy. I, was a, I wasn't a good looking guy, don't get me wrong, but I, I was a devil with a girl. I was a Dickens. <laughs> Nothing in a skirt was safe. Nothing. <laughs> Till I met that Scotchman, he almost beat my brains in. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> that a horrible place for an ear. Uh, you know where your ear should be is under your arm. Keep it warm in the winter, you know? <laughs> Can you imagine the fun you girls could have you had an ear under your arm? <laughs> Scare people to death. What did you say? <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Here we go. Did I get it? Huh? Always like to put an alley in the old block, you know. Trouble of this, the alley slowly becoming a parking lot, you know. They talk to each other. I love to sneeze. I've made a study of sneezing. Oh, I had a strange dream the other night. I dream I died and went to heaven, and I met God, and he sneezed, and I didn't know what to say to him. <laughs> you know when that's gonna hit you funny? Sunday in church. <laughs> But you know, I have made a study of, of, of sneezes. There's all kinds of sneezes. There's the uh, inquisitive sneeze. Hmm. Who hmm. she? <laughs> then you have a chocolate bar sneeze. A chocolate bar. Her she. Then you have the Japanese sneeze, the Shogun sneeze. Konnichiwa! <laughs> now for this next one, the first three rolls had better move back. <laughs> this is Welcome to Tokyo. <laughs> I like the truck driver's delight. The truck driver's delight. Ah! There's something dead under this stage. <laughs> boy, that's been here a long time, too, boy. <laughs> it follows you around no matter where you go. Okay, who's the wise guy? Took the letters out of my shoe. <laughs> what?
You want me to read this? I don't need glasses, but I reached the age where curiosity is greater than vanity. <laughs> you want me to read this? A young lady by the name of Helen Hunt has found a pocketbook containing $65 keys to an automobile and a few other articles. Oh, she's at the main door now with a head usher. I thought you were She's at the main door now with the head usher, and, well, I think Helen Hunt deserves a lot of credit for being so honest, so if anyone has lost their pocketbook, they can go to Helen Hunt for it. There is one type of, uh, there's one type of entertainer that seems to have disappeared from the stage, in the modern stage, and that is the Irish tenors. So with uh, that, I would like to introduce on our bill tonight, Clem Cadiddlehopper, the Irish tenor. I don't know who you are, but you've lost a lot of weight, haven't you? Good evening, I would like to... I, I, I'll have the butter ready in about an hour. At uh, this time, I would like to sing. I would like to sing. I have to sing. <laughs> 25 or 30 high-class musical selects. Oh, how are you tonight? Yeah, it looks like they're burying them, setting up now. <laughs> Anybody we know? <laughs> At this time, I would like to sing 25 or 30 high-class musical selections. That's a whole note. When you come to it, you play around it. <laughs> Would you, uh, first of all, this first little number I'm going to sing for you is Go Tell Aunt Rudy. <laughs> I've heard it myself. I don't care for it. <laughs> I don't mind singing for you, but I ain't going to suffer, I'll tell you that. Sound me an A, would you? First of Oh, A, oh, A, oh, 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 oh. Is that A? That's right. It sounds like L. <laughs> here, let me get this here. Okay, <clears throat> a little introduction, please. Anytime you're ready. You can start playing anytime. Not so loud! Get ready. I'm ready now. You may uh, give me a little introduction. Split one of them in the middle. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
I'm ready. Go tell Aunt Rody. Go tell Aunt Rody. Go tell Aunt Rody that the old gray goose is dead. It died in the mill pond. It died in the mill pond. There's some undertone tittering going on out there. <clears throat> it died in the mill pond. It... <laughs> now you're going to listen to this. You folks standing up in the back there, I'll have a seat for you in a minute. It'll be a little soggy, but you can sit in it. It died in the mill pond. It died in the mill pond. It died in the mill pond, standing on its head. The goslins are crying, the goslins are crying, the goslins are crying because their mummy's dead. <laughs> and believe me, I'm nutty enough to do it. <laughs> I got my shorts on backwards. <laughs> go tell Aunt Rody, go tell Aunt Rody, go tell Aunt Rody that the old gray goose is dead. Why don't you feed that thing? <laughs> How do you like that? All the time I thought it was my singing. Now, I mean, you know, a minute ago, I was telling you about having that sandwich. <laughs> Have you ever been to this little restaurant they've got down the street here? That's the strangest place I've ever been in in my life. <laughs> you order one thing and they yell something else back to the kitchen. You, you ever been in there? Huh? Yeah. I'll have uh, some um, blueberry pie and some powdered sugar. <clears throat> Indigestion in a snowstorm. <laughs> I'll add some uh, sauerkraut and sausage. <clears throat> Unchained too with a bale of hay. <laughs> I'll have some bacon and eggs. Adam and Eve on the raft. <laughs> Scramble them, shipwreck them. <laughs> Pork and beans. <laughs> Revolution, enemy on the top. <laughs> I ordered a steak in there yesterday, and they brought me a steak that was so thin it only had one side to it. <laughs> they had to shut off the air conditioning, kept blowing it off my plate, you know. <laughs> I couldn't eat it. I called the waitress over, I said, I can't eat this. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's tough. She says, well, you're gonna have to pay for it. You've been it all out of shape. <laughs> I says, I'm not going to pay for it. You call the manager out here, will you? Or take it back and shove it down near the chef's throat. She goes out to the kitchen. She comes right back. I said, did you shove that down the chef's throat like I told you? She says, I'm sorry. There's an order of pork chops ahead of you. <laughs> but, oh, I would like to compliment the orchestra here. You really, hey, you, was that bass fiddle? 
No, I'm I'm uh, I'm not a troublemaker. You understand? I'm, I'm I'm only here tonight. It don't make any difference to me. But I found out something. I think you ought to know. How much you get a week for playing that thing? Three hundred dollars? Yeah. You know what they get for playing them little ones? Four hundred. <laughs> Now you put that thing under your chin and get that other hundred dollars. <laughs> always like the cello players. You can always tell a cello player, good night. <laughs> could you, uh, uh, Jerry, could you have the orchestra to stand? The, the ladies may remain seated for now. Would you stand? That's nice. You can stand and get your applause, ladies. Get your applause. No, 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 you may see, stand. the ladies, you, you may be seated. No, just the ladies sit down for a minute. I, uh, this only take a second, and they're not ready back there for the next stuff anyhow. And I want to get this checked. Okay, you can sit down now. I lost a pair of pants yesterday. Yeah, the other ladies too. <laughs> These pants, when you perspire, the longer you wear them, the longer they get, you know? <laughs> I was gonna buy a belt, but I figure why support my pants? They never did anything for me. <laughs> yeah. I came in yesterday to rehearsal, and I said to the little uh, uh, saxophone player, he was sitting there, he was doing this. <laughs> so I said, I don't mean to be rude, but is that some kind of... <laughs> Is that some kind of an affliction? He says, no. It's that damn trombone player in the back of me. <laughs> My next little mime that I would like to do for you, I'm going to take you to a maternity ward. <clears throat> Oh, before I do, before I do, I got, a, I got a little joke, a little boy joke, a little boy joke, a little boy. His mother says, how would you like a little brother or sister to play with? He says, oh, you would do that for me, a little brother or a sister? Oh, it's all the same to you, I'd just soon have a pony. <laughs> she says, we're gonna have a baby. He said, we're gonna have a baby? Oh, we're going to have the baby. We're going to have the baby. He goes to school singing. Now the teacher calls the mother and tells how he's acting. He gets home, the mother says, you're really happy. He said, yeah, I'm happy because we're going to have the baby. <laughs> she says, would you like to feel him? He said, do what? He said, would you like to feel him? Over here's his little elbow. Over here's his little knee. Now the little boy don't say anything for about three days. <laughs> the teacher says, Aren't you happy about the little baby anymore? He said, we're not going to have the baby. He says, you're not? He said, no, mommy ate him. <laughs> I'm going to take you now to a maternity ward. Now, I don't know if it's this way where you folks are right at this moment, but uh, where I live, the little hospital there, down at the end of the hall on the maternity ward floor, there's a window, and at certain hours, curtains open, and the new fathers walk in and see these little babies, see? Now, you should see the expression on these guys' faces for the first time when they see these. And regardless of who the guy is, they pick out the cutest one in the bunch, and that one has to be his, see? So we take him out of the maternity ward and the newborn babies. <laughs>
would like to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and home box office for allowing me to be a part of your evening. It's a lot of fun to hear laughs without the use of four-letter words. It's a lot of fun to visit your home. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I don't pick on other comedians the way they entertain. I don't dislike anybody. I, I don't hate my enemies because I made them. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, it's been a pleasure to be here. I'll try to sum it all up in a little song that I have written. <clears throat> the time has come to say goodnight. Now our time does fly. We've had a laugh, perhaps a tear, and now we hear goodbye. I really hate to say goodnight, for times like these are few. I wish you love and happiness and everything you do. The time has come to say goodnight, and I hope I've made a friend. And so we'll say, may God bless until we meet again. Good night and may God bless. Thank you.